And God will bless you. Even Jesus took time off for his labor. So we're going to come on in. We're going to have a good time today. And I want you just to, just to get ready for what God's got for us. And, and normally on the first Sunday is uh, back to basic Sunday. But uh, I really felt compelled to skip that this time. I may do it next week, which will be from the book of Job. But we're going into the red horse because the things I've seen this week on the news is showing us the red horse is on the horizon. All right. Let's have a good time with the Lord.
Father, we just ask you to touch each and every life here, Lord God. You see the needs. You see the situations. And we ask that you would supply them according to your riches and glory. Show yourself strong in our lives. That we may further believe and give testimony of the things that you've done for us. Father, we'll be sure to give you glory, honor, and praise for it all. In Christ Jesus' name, the church said. Amen. 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 You can be seated for a minute. Brother Jim Finney showed up this morning. I'm telling you what, I always, I always expect something great when Brother Jim shows up. Brother, why don't you stand up, turn around, talk to some people for a minute. Just say what was ever on your mind. Well, I haven't been evangelizing since April. I was gone about five months and came back here. So I'm usually gone from Eastern Carol, from Carolinas. Uh, but I usually share about some physical healing that is take place as we're called in that type of ministry. And uh, a prophetess friend of mine I've known for several years, lived near the Tennessee, Kentucky line, pastors, and used to travel a lot. Uh, she's had a diabetic condition in her foot. She broke her, her, her ankle. So she had some parts put in there, etc. And uh, the only thing is about it, she believes. And the doctors can't figure it out. She's got bone that was not there. God has created a brand new bone. Amen. So the Lord is, a, he's still in the creative miracle business. If you need something from Jesus, he's the same. He has not changed. So believe him and you can have exactly what his word says. If you believe exactly as he tells you how to believe from the word of God. That's right. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise. That's good stuff. Yeah, I remember uh, last time Brother Jim was here, and he said, there's somebody in here that you've got a knee problem. It was me. My knee was snapping and popping, and I was having a hard time even walking on the thing. And I walked up to him, and it was just still just a snapping and carrying on. And he said, Lord, the Lord's got this, and he prayed for me. And, and when I walked away, I was still snapping and popping. And I said, my Rice Krispie knee is still Rice Krispie. But I said, but God, I know... I know that you wouldn't have put it in his mind to call me out if you were going to leave me the same. And the next morning I woke up, and when I stood up, I, I didn't realize my knee was no longer popping. It had popped for about a month. It was no longer popping. So, so God's awesome. Amen. God is so, 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 so awesome. But, but Brother Jim, you're awesome, man. You're an awesome man of God. Amen. Let's all stand up. We're going to sing, feel the rain. Y'all look, y'all look. Remember, God is on the throne. God's got everything under control. We trust him. Even on Labor Day, he's still got things in control. Because while others are taking off, he never takes off. Amen? Amen, I feel the rain.
We also got a special presentation before I start preaching. Ready? I keep falling. Another great. 
graduate. Let's see, his name is Thompson. No, it's not Thompson. I'm sorry. His name is Drew Baker. How you doing, Drew Baker? You're looking sharp. Come on up here, bro. Have you prepared a little good long speech, did you? <laughs> this is okay, bro. I'm, like, I'm picking at you. Oh, this. You're awesome, brother. You are so awesome. I'm going to read you Everybody got a different thing, a different person, a uh, personal. So when you, so later on, years down the road, you can pick something and go, I remember that day. And it's all come to pass. Ready? Andrew, I've watched you grow into an awesome young man. The force is strong in your family, especially in you. Trust God to lead you through an awesome life, Pastor David. And your scriptures, Deuteronomy 31 and 6, for the land you go in, for the, land, for, for the Lord your God will go with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Awesome, bro. Well, right now, touch, touch Drew. Lead him, guide him, direct him. Lord, the, strong, the force is very strong in him, Lord, and let him just grow into it. And I thank you for what you're going to do with him, and the many lives are going to be touched and saved in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. There you go, brother. God is so good. Amen. Get your Bibles out. Now, normally, normally on the first Sunday we go to, uh, we're going to go into, to uh, start going into Job and work in Job a little bit. But honestly, uh, after all the things I've seen in the news in the last, especially as it just keeps unfolding in the last week, uh, instead of, of letting it just aggravate me and I'll be unproductive, instead, I think it's, we need to talk about it. Okay? Amen. If we don't talk about it, then, then we're going to be like a lot of other people put our head in the sand. And when, when it happens... When it's over, we're going to be standing around going, what happened? Okay, so you're going to be aware of what's happening. So, well, first, let me just let me just say this. There was a, an injured client who had been injured in an accident and went looking for a lawyer to represent him without cost. One lawyer, and one lawyer told him that he would take the case on contingency. When the client asked, what is contingency? The lawyer replied, if I don't win your lawsuit, I don't get anything. If I do win your lawsuit, you don't get anything. <laughs> All right, I tried. Amen. Get your Bible out. Get your Bible. Revelation chapter 6. Next week we'll talk about Job. Okay? The Lord always does things in a very special way. And, and again, I believe that, that it's necessary that we go through Revelation. See, this keeps us from pointing fingers. And making accusations, we just got we got the word. I don't have to point fingers. I don't have to make accusations. I got the word. Amen. Plain and simple. This is not politics. This is God. God's got things going. Amen. We got to keep up what God's doing. Amen. So get your Bible. Stand for the reading of the word. Revelation chapter six, verse three. Let's go and read the verse one. So that's where we started at last last week. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, behold, a white horse, and him that sat on it had a bow and a crown, and was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer, David, of course, the Antichrist. And when he had opened the second seal, and they were going to talk about the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat upon Thereon to take peace, to take, y'all say it with me, take peace from the earth. Take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Stretch forth your hands this way. Father, we love you, we praise your name, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well, and we know, God, that you are in command and in control of all things. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us. To help us see, to know, to understand, and realize that all this stuff that's happening around us was already prophesied thousands of years ago. And it's just really happening right now. And we thank you. And, and, and Lord, 
this week, if there's ever been a time that I've seen the red horse, and this last era with COVID, the red horse, along with the white horse, definitely is on the horizon. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Well, wait down and tell somebody, uh, the past is behind us, the future is ahead of us, God is with us, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Amen. So, 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 again, let's just, uh, again, we're talking about Revelation, when we're on the red horse, I really, over the years, there's been many times I've preached on the red horse, but it actually became so clear since COVID that I just, it just blows me away. And, and, and this is bigger, and let me just say this ahead of time, this is bigger than politics. This is bigger than uh, who's what. This is bigger than Democrat, Republican, Independent. This is bigger than Russia and China and Afghanistan. This is so big. And if we get caught up in politics, we will lose the point and we will lose what God is trying to show us. You've got to stay aware. Go beyond. You've got to see beyond the politics and you've got to see God's plan unfolding. Okay? So, again, here it is. I'm just going to read it again. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat on their own to take peace from the earth. And they should kill, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So just a little continuity here. Uh, again, uh, there's the four horsemen coming down. Okay, Jesus breaks the seven seals on the book, one by one. And as the seals are opened, a series of divine judgments are poured out upon the earth. And, and those that dwell on the earth. And it's so important that you understand why the rapture is going to take place. And why, and, and some people still don't believe that's going to happen, and that's fine. You know, some think it's going to happen mid-trip, post-trip, whenever. We'll just argue on the way up, and we're going out of here. Amen? Amen? So whichever way you believe, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you. I, 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 it's beyond that. This is beyond arguing. You believe what you're going to believe, I'm going to tell you what I believe, I'm going to tell you what I believe the Word says. And then you make your own You make your own decision. But I believe that's the reason why we're going to be pulled out of here because, because when my bride come down that aisle, and Linda come walking down that aisle, she was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. And I said, I cannot believe she is mine. And I'm her. I would have done nothing to harm her. I would have done nothing to mutilate her. Nothing to cause harm on her. We are the bride of Christ. And to God we are beautiful. And I believe with all my heart he's not going to mutilate his bride. And that's why we do it. So when the rapture takes, when the rapture form blows, uh, it just says with a shout, with the trump of the last, the last trump of God, and trump of God shall sound, and, and I honestly somehow believe it. I can just hear this as wedding music. I mean, a wedding march. You know, we're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So just look at all this. So the four seals described in this is going to take place. The first 21 months of tribulation. So again, now just, just real quick. It's not, I'm not going to, as a matter of fact, the service probably won't last that long today. Which will be good if you've got some activities planned for Labor Day. Uh, when the Lamb opens the first seal, there's a noise of thunder in heaven. And the noise of thunder is signaling to us that there's an approaching storm. That what's getting ready to happen is going to blow us away. I, and I watched this week as when the hurricane hit Louisiana, that was bad enough. But when it went on up north and New Jersey, these places that have never seen anything like this, you tell me something's not getting ready to happen. Amen? So, 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 so there's a storm coming. And what's about to be unleashed? The world cannot even comprehend. It's like they said, things were happening. You know, I remember when we kept going through our stuff, they said it was the 100-year storm. The 100-year storm it only happens once in a lifetime. Well, now they're saying the same thing about New Jersey and those places. This is a once-in-a-lifetime, 100-year event. Again, we're getting ready. Call it global warming. Call it whatever you want to call it. We're getting ready for something very powerful to take place. Okay? So now, now, so of course, this is all I'm going to talk about from last week, and then we're going to go right on in 
to what's going on. The white horse is the white horse of deception. He's the great counterfeiter. He, he comes in and he tries to make everybody believe that he is the Christ. And he's going to wind up deceiving so many people. And they're going to be blown away and think that he is the Christ. The Jews, or the Jews themselves, because they didn't believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Jews are going to believe that he is the true Messiah until Satan inhabits him midway of the tribulation period. And, and when they become hunted, that's when they're going to realize that they made a mistake. Part of the tribulation, listen to this, part of the reason for the tribulation is for the Jews to realize who is Jesus, the true Messiah. It's also for Jesus to take back the earth because right now the God of this world has a lease on it, but the lease is running short. And when the lease runs out, and it's going to run out during this, then Jesus is going to take it back. So, so, so here we go. Now, now the red horse. The red horse, this is such a powerful, powerful thing. We just read it. I won't read it again. But the red horse, the first one was the deception. The white horse is the horse of deception. The second seal, of course, is the red horse. And the red horse is the horse of destruction, war. Now, now uh, you look around. You tell me, what, tell me if you don't see war on the horizon. And who do we fight with now more than anything? Terrorism. And now, who has wound up having one of the greatest armies in the world now because we, what we left Afghanistan and left all those weapons? The terrorists now have bigger, they're bigger than one third of our allies now. So we got some stuff going on here, okay? We got some tough stuff going on. And again, this is not political. I'm not even going there. Don't even... I'm not talking about Biden and Trump and all. No, 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 no. I'm just laying down facts. The facts are the terrorists now are armed. Okay? Now, now, uh, so let's get along with this. Let's get a look. The, the red horse of destruction. Let's just break her down. I want to, want to break it down. Uh, red, of course, symbolizes war. And if you look up the word, the word uh, red, it's actually where we get the word uh, uh, for fire. So, so it's talking about fire. It's talking about, about uh, bloodshed. Matter of fact, it's going to be such a massive bloodshed and raging fires that people are not going to be able to handle it. And so what's going to happen is they're going to turn on each other. So here's what's going to happen now. This, this could happen... Listen to me. I know we got to have the white horse come first. I know that. So I'm not saying the red horse is going to come tomorrow. But once the white horse appears, well, we'll go into this. Once the white horse appears, then the red horse comes behind him, and I'll show you why. In 6,000 years of recorded history, guess what? There has been 14,550 recorded wars. That's recorded. That's not counting wars we don't know about. Okay? And that, that rate of the recorded wars, actually for 6,000 years, is average two and a half wars, major recorded wars a year for 6,000 years. Wow. Think about it. And it just in the 20th century alone, there's been over 130 wars. That's why people say, when you say there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, and they go, yeah, 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 that's always been wars and rumors of wars. But let me just break her down just a little bit more, okay? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 7 and 8, it starts talking about what's going to happen in the end days. And he starts talking about all, let me just get the Bible out and I'll read it. I want you to hear this because this is going to shed a different light. Uh, when Jesus is talking about his second coming, you got to remember, sometimes when he's talking about the second coming, we're talking about rapture. And other times when he's talking about the second coming, we're actually talking when he comes back at the end of Revelation. So, so you've got to know which one. And I didn't write a bunch of this stuff down, so if, you, if you're taking notes, now's a good time to start taking notes because I'm getting ready to, to run you through some of this stuff. And again, remember, if you think I'm up here, Talking about anything other than the Bible, you're wrong. I'm talking about Bible and facts. Okay? Bible and facts. That's it. All right. So, uh, chapter 24, Matthew 24, 
And verse 4, and Jesus answered and said to him, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That's been happening the whole time. But then there's going to be the major one, the Antichrist. The others were, had the Antichrist spirit. This will be the Antichrist. Okay? So, so the others were Antichrist in spirit. He'll be Antichrist in flesh. There is a difference. Okay? So, uh, it's like when my mama told me when my daddy got home, he was going to whip my butt. All I could think of was his spirit. But once he stepped in that door, I had his presence. Okay? So, there's a whole different thing. All right. So, uh, take heed. To, uh, excuse me, verse 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. In other words, you're going to look at 6,000 years. 15,000 15, wars. Okay? So now, so watch this now. For nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Let me break that one down. Nation shall rise against nation. That word nation is ethos. It's where we get the word ethnic. So it says in the last days, ethnic group will rise up against ethnic group. Tribe against tribe. What do we got going on now? Everywhere. Everywhere. You know, and all these, the, 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 the protests everywhere and the riots and stuff. You know, in Afghanistan, the lady said, we're not going to be held down like before. And so they started protesting. But that protest had ended real fast. Because the Taliban come up and started shooting in the air. And said, next time it won't be in the air. And so they broke it on up. So, 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 ethnic group against ethnic group. You can put it any way you want it, but all over the world, what I see is ethnic group facing or facing off with another ethnic group. Okay? And as it happens and unveils in our eyes and we see it, it just blows me away because this stuff is happening like never before. I know we've had it along the way, but never before like this. So, so ethnic group against ethnic group uh, uh, and the, 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 the famines and, the, and the, the earthquakes. Think about all these natural disasters that have multiplied, multiplied. People are saying this global woman. I, it may be. I'm not here. To, I'm, not, I'm not a kind of scientist. You got one scientist say it is, one scientist says it is not. Okay. But it's happening. Amen. It's here. New Jersey was not even prepared for what hit them this week. And it was the, at the back end of the hurricane, not the front end. It was the back end. So, so, so watch this. 75 of these 130 wars in the 20th century were since World War II. Wow. So, so the saying is, get ready. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Every election cycle, you vote for us, you put us in the office, it's going to get better, and it gets worse. You know why? It's because this is beyond politics. Way beyond politics. This is not being led by a human government, what's happening to us right now. Why ultimately, ultimately, human government is nothing but a puppet to what is happening. Period. Whatever. Whatever, any way you want to say, whoever they are, it don't matter. I'm not here because Democrat, Republican, I'm saying all of them, all of them, they don't realize how we're playing into the hand that's being dealt. It said he went out. It says the red horse said, it said, said he, 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 he went out. Now, that word went out means to expose from a secret place, a sudden flash like lightning, tearing away. Hope. That's when that word went out. Just went out. Just went out. They went out the red horse. Went out means he's already there. He's in a secret place. But when he comes out, it's going to be sudden like a flash of lightning. And when he comes out, all hope will disappear. That's just that one word. Went out. Wow. Then there's another horse. And that was red. Pyro, where we get 
py uh, pyrotronics and pyro, pyro, fire. And power was given to him. Power was given unto him. And that means whatever he needed to accomplish his purpose, it would be supplied. That's exactly what it means. Whatever he needed to accomplish his purpose, and he's going to accomplish it, that's what's going to happen. And he said, erect, he said, ready. He said, no man can knock him off this horse. No man can knock him off this horse. He is set. He is ready, sitting on this horse. And it said, to take peace from the earth. Now, that's, that's just, again, this is only a couple of verses, so you really got to get into the, to the, to the, to, to the knowing the history, and then put it to the day, and then take in the Greek, and you got to put these all together, and you got to build this case here, so people can see what's coming. The peace is broken. <laughs> you see, the Antichrist peace is short-lived. He, he, matter of fact, the Antichrist, when he comes, he's going to be aggressive. So he's going to claim peace, but he's going to be aggressive because it says he's coming forth to conquer and to conquer and to conquer. And what's going to happen is the world is going to revolt and it's going to lead to World War III. Okay? So now, to take peace from the earth, that word peace is uranium, which means to be, watch this, uranium means to bind together that which has been separated. It means to set a broken bone. It is a medical term. It is also a term of hope. And when Jesus was on the cross, he had broken man. He reached out with one hand and grabbed God. He reached out with the other hand and grabbed man. And he put together that which had been broken, that relationship. And what he had done on Calvary will be taken totally away when the red horse arrives. Wow. Think about it. Those that are left behind. Think about it. Jesus reached up, reached down, and put us together with peace, well-being, understanding. And when the Holy Spirit's taken out of the way and the red horse comes, that relationship with the earth is totally severed. So now, watch this. So, peace Rest and harmony. The opposite of that is chaos and disorder. I remember, and September 11th is coming up, and I remember that day when that happened, I was actually, I was at Fountain, and I'd gone out and I was checking a boat out on the dock, and I come back in, I walked through uh, upholstery, and everybody was pulled together by a radio. And I walked in, and right at the start with my, my heart kind of jumped, and I said, what are they doing? And I'd always been instructed if you saw something going wrong, even though it might not be in your department. If you see something going wrong, you step in because you're a manager. You step in and do something about it. So I was going to step in and see what was going on. I said, what are y'all doing? And they said, listen. And I thought the, the, first world trade, the first one had been hit. And so I went upstairs in engineering, and they had a little TV in there, and by the time I got to the second one, or got, got up there to engineering, the second tower had been hit. And I remember seeing these people run and all the chaos. You remember that? Can you, can you imagine that being worldwide? That's what it's talking about. When the red horse comes, it's going to be like 9 11, only multiply it worldwide. So watch. It says that they should kill one another. Why? Kill. See, see, again, World War breaks out, and it says, this horse is. Again, I put it down there again so we could just see it. Then when I know the horse that was red, and power was given unto him that sat upon it to take peace from the earth, and that it should kill one another, and there was given him a great sword. So, the world breaks out, the war breaks out worldwide, and there is a worldwide revolt. Now, 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 let me just, before we go to the next, to the next one, and talk about World War. Ezekiel, now, now there, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of debate about this, and so I'm not here to debate. I'm here to tell you what I see. That's it. I'm, I'm a grassroots theologian, and I'm here to tell you what I see, and what I've studied, and what I believe. But Ezekiel 
38 and 39 talk about Gog and Magog and it talks about the wars. And if you look at the timing in Ezekiel 38, what's the timing in Ezekiel 39? And again, some people totally disagree and that's fine. Because none of us have a perfect knowledge. None of us. None of us except for God. Ezekiel 39 is talking about the great battle. 38 is talking about the great battle on the other end of the thousand years. And Satan grabs the, all the countries back together again and they come up to fight Jesus at that great battle. The battle of Armageddon. That big old battle. Gog and Magog. Ezekiel 38 is talking about then. But Ezekiel 39, if you look at the timing, look at what it says. Again, it's talking about Russia and their allies. God, God, God of Magog. And you look again, look at all the others there. Their little coalition. They're going to, after the rapture, after he that led us taken out of the way, they're going to attack Israel. I know that seems silly, don't it? Because they don't, they're, they're buddies with Israel right now, aren't they? Mm -mm. The whole Middle East hates Israel. So, Russia and their allies are going to take on Israel, and God's going to supernaturally defend them. And the Bible says, this is I don't know, this is before, but this is before the, this 38 is after the seven years and the thousand year reign. There for 38 is, but 39 is before the seven years and the beginning of the seven years. Because the Bible says after God intervenes that, that Israel will burn the weapons of war from the coalition for seven years. Let me tell you a little something else. I heard that they were experimenting with, uh, and I've needed to do some more research, but I, I haven't lately about this. But I heard that Russia, because of all the, the weather and because of the hills and the places where they got to go, they're making artillery. They figured out how to make lighter artillery by using some type of, uh, of an advanced veneer. So it's very possible that it could burn for seven years. And it says that it's going to take seven months to bury the dead from that war. So, it's very possible that the red horse will bring in this. So, 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 again, the timing, you, you really gotta, gotta put all these things together, but 38 and 39 is gonna happen, it will happen, it's all about the timing. But from what I've seen and what I've studied, 39 is going to happen after the rapture. And the Bible says, I'm telling you, it's going to take, I haven't wrote it down here. And they dwell in the city of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the handstands and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them that they may cleanse the land. Wow. That's some tough stuff. And so, so, so when I saw this, and I started studying it, honestly, <clears throat> I, I know I still preach on Job today, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't get there because this just, with all the stuff that's been happening, it just, it just blew me away because of all the stuff that, that, that's going on in our news right now. And so let me just go a little bit further. The planet is brutalized. I mean brutalized from this red horse. <clears throat> the Bible says that he was given a great sword. Now great does not necessarily mean he had a great old big long sword because that's more than likely what he's talking about. The sword used in hand-to-hand -hand combat by the soldier, he wore it on his belt, he pulled it out, and in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he would go up under the rib cage and go up inside, inside the rib cage, and he would just tear your insides out. And so when he pulled it out, there was no escape from that kind of warfare. 
So, this is what he's talking about. So what he's talking about when he says great is talking about the extent, the reach of this. This is not going to be just in Afghanistan. This is not just going to be in the U.S. This is just not going to be in Russia. This is going to be worldwide. It's going to be something like the world has never seen before. You can't even comprehend what is happening. And then the sword, of course, is a short sword used by assassins. So, so people are going to turn on each other. But you know what? If you look at it, just, just watch this. This rider divides race against race, class against class, neighbor against neighbor, employee against employer, husband against wife. Because he's the master of division. And his spirit is already here in the spirit of Antichrist. But it hasn't been unleashed like it's going to be unleashed when the red horse comes. New Living Translation says another horse uh, came out and, was, and his rider was given a mighty sword and, and, and um, at the end it says that he gave, was given power or authority to take peace from the earth and there was war and slaughter everywhere. Wow. Think about what we're looking at now. The world is ripe for war. I remember, I remember the very first when I, when I was a little bitty fellow, I can remember the Vietnam conflict, they call it. It was a war. And I remember every day, Huntley and Brinkley. I remember Huntley and Brinkley. Okay? And, and Walter Concrete. And every day, they would show these pictures behind them of helicopters landing in the jungle and taking people and putting them, on, putting them on gurneys and putting them in the helicopters and showing places and showing all the stuff that was going on. And so when I was a little fella, all I ever can remember, honestly, when I think about during that time, there's only two things I can think about. I do remember, I know you're going to say, well, you, you weren't old enough to remember this. Yeah, yeah, I, it, it, it stuck with me. As I remember, I was a little bitty thing, only a couple of years old. But I remember, I, I'm not kidding, I remember watching a flag draped coffin pulled by horses down the streets of Washington, D.C. I remember that, John F. Kennedy. And I remember every day about Vietnam. And I remember my uncle. I was a teen. I was probably about 12 or 13 years old. And my uncle, we lived in Hamilton County, and my uncle came all the way down. And he said, they're shipping me off to Vietnam. And I just want to come by and say I love you. And I remember that. Of course, he came back, but I remember that. But that's <laughs> nothing compared to what's coming. I remember watching what's going on uh, during the Gulf War and Desert Storm and all this stuff. I remember watching this. I remember when, when they first started letting the reporters be out there on the field. I remember the Patriot missiles coming. There's the scuds were coming in and the Patriot missiles and sometimes the reporters would even run as it was hit. And I had a guy who was pastoring who was in the National Guard. And he thought in the National Guard he should be safe. They sent him over there. And he was over there. And he told me, he wrote, wrote me and said, man, these scuds, it's not a joke. He says, I hope those patrons can catch him. So, again, that's nothing compared to what's coming because that was all regional. Now it's going to be in our own backyard. So, he's coming to take peace.
take this. He's going to reach right down. He's going to grab it. And on his very, look, as soon as he appears, all of that stuff, all of that groundwork, all the stuff that Calvary provided for him, everything, So, all hell's about to break loose. It still ain't broken loose yet. It's amazing because it's going to take seven months to bury the dead from this war in Ezekiel 39. And there's no telling, oh, when the Bible starts talking about, they start just talking about, don't even give numbers. They just say one third of the population, one quarter of the population. When these people are dying, all hell is about to break loose. Brandon, come on up here, bro. I'll play something softly. Next week I'll do Job again, but I really felt compelled. Because when I hear people talking now, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, whether it be hospital, Walmart, walking down the street, everywhere I go, I hear either fear or frustration about what's going on in the world. Today is the day of salvation. The devil's done everything he can over the years to break that uranium, that peace, but he can't. When the red horse comes out from heaven, it's broken. If there's ever been a time to know that you're right and you're ready, it's now. Everybody stand. Kids bow, all eyes open.
love you. I thank you that you sent your word not only to heal us, but to help us know what's coming. Help us stay prepared for what's coming. And we thank you that we're not alone. Father, we recommit our life to you today in a very powerful way. Help us to make differences everywhere we go. And Lord, touch our families and our friends that are right with you. Bring opportunity for us to talk with them. Bring opportunity for somebody else to talk with them. And we thank you for all that you're doing. All that you're doing. And we thank you, God, that we're going to escape the sword because we trust in you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Give Lord a hand clap and pray. Thank you. 